Hey everyone, I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how you can take data collected in the field from a participatory mapping exercise and convert it to GIS data, uh, which is useful for all sorts of spatial analysis further on down the road. Uh, a few basic things you'll need. First is uh, Quantum GIS. It's a free open source GIS program uh, available at QGIS.org. Um, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it's a very robust GIS program, so first you got to download it here and install it on your computer. Uh, then you will also need, for this exercise, an image file uh, that represents the sketches or the notes that you, uh, you collected with your stakeholder, your, um, your landowner or farmer, uh, about the lay of their, their property. And then the last thing is a thing I'm calling a georeference polygon, but it's something that I've prepared a bunch of ahead of time uh, and are associated with the individual farms for the short course. So again, starting out, we're going to assume that you've already been out in the field, uh, met with your um, stakeholder, landowner, and uh, been able to sort of pour over a map in person and identify uh, the structures of the property, the fields, the hedgerows, the infrastructure, uh, and sketch that stuff onto an image uh, that you then have available. I'm just going to use a demo image now, but we're going to start at the next step, which is where we georeference that image and then uh, grab the data from that image and turn it into GIS information. Uh, so this is Quantum GIS. Uh, the current version is 1.8. That should be available when you download it. Um, to start off, we're going to add that georeference polygon that I mentioned, and that's a vector layer. So it's this button here. You can also get to it by going to Layer and Add Vector Layer. Hit Browse, and then uh, navigate to wherever you have that uh, that polygon saved. I'll be distributing those uh, ahead of time, so you'll have it available. In this case, it's uh, I'm using the Jericho Settlers Farm example. So JSF reference. It's a shapefile .shp. Hit open, open, and there's your polygon. Uh, it's not terribly interesting right now, but what we're going to do is use this to uh, identify specific ground truth points from uh, the image that you uh, that you know hypothetically we sketched on ahead of time for this. So the next step is going to be uh, adding the georeferencer tool for Quantum GIS, which is under the raster folder here. Uh, then go down to georeferencer, open the georeferencer, and you can see you get a, a separate little menu down here. You can sort of split the screens between the two of them. But what we're going to do now is add a uh, add that image file with the annotation that uh, we added specifically to the to the map in the field. Um, so we'll hit this button, this add raster. We'll grab the image file and then that's been added into the lower section of the map here. And we can zoom in and take a look at what was sketched. And since this is just an example, it's nothing comprehensive. You can see just some colored lines were added around the fields, a property boundary was sketched. Um, just a few things here. Um, so something else you can see is this white dotted line. Uh, on the images that you'll be bringing to the farms with you to sketch on, either on a tablet computer or on paper, uh, you'll have these dotted lines already added. And what these do uh, is create that georeference for us. Uh, this square that's symbolized by a white dotted line here corresponds exactly with this square in geographic space. So this image, even though it doesn't have any coordinates associated with it, we're going to assign those coordinates because we have a reference point. Uh, so it's a fairly simple process. You just grab this add point tool. Uh, once you have a corner of the square visible, we'll add a point first to the image. And you can see it gives you the option to find the actual uh, latitude and longitude of that point but we're just going to grab it from the map canvas, which is up above us. It's that georeference polygon. Grab that corner and then hit OK. And we're just going to do that four times for each of the corners. And I've just skipped ahead. You can see I've added one point to georeference each of the corners of this image. Those are all set there. Uh, the next step is to georeference this image. and. You can move right through this, uh, hit OK. Um, the transformation type, uh, 
these are just some parameters that I've found are effective for this kind of georeferencing, so you can copy them. Uh, there's no real need to fiddle with them. Uh, I'd go with a thin plate spline, use cubic resampling, no compression, save your output raster as just a different file name, and as a geotiff. Um, the target S uh, coordinate reference system, the best thing to do here is just type in EPSG colon 4326. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to assign a very common uh, map projection to this. Otherwise, uh, you don't need to check anything here other than uh, load in QGIS when done. Then hit OK. Takes a second to finish. And then it has added in there. So we can close our georeferencer. And you can see that now this image is available in what, what we're calling GIS space, uh, which this space is uh, fully georeferenced. This means you can load in soils layers, uh, hydrology layers, transportation infrastructure. Anything that is a GIS bit of information uh, can be loaded in here and uh, added in the appropriate place. We're just going to confirm that this is, in fact, georeferenced correctly. So we're going to go over to this. Uh, this is called the table of contents over here on the left. I'm going to grab the reference polygon, move it above the image in the table of contents. You can see it's kind of opaque. We can't really tell yet. So double click on the little patch of color here, and you get the symbology menu. Uh, then we change this to no fill. So it's just a, just a border outline. Hit OK. And we'll zoom in just to check. And yeah, you can see that white dotted line underneath lines up almost perfectly with the uh, georeference polygon. So we are in good shape to convert the data on this map into GIS data. So we'll zoom in on these sketches now. And the next step is going to be to create a, uh, a shape file to uh, accept all of these features so that you can sketch all of these features into something that is GIS standard format. And you do that by going to Layer, New, New Shapefile Layer. Uh, and we're going to want this to be a polygon layer rather than a point or a line. Uh, and in addition to this ID attribute, it's, there's going to be a sort of a table of information associated with each feature, uh, much like a spreadsheet uh, that you'd see in Excel. Uh, and in this case, the columns, there's only one column, and that's the ID number. So we're going to give it a different column. We're going to call this the notes column uh, so that you can type in things that are associated with a particular polygon. Say, for instance, this. Uh, you took a whole bunch of notes about what crops were uh, planted in these greenhouses, uh, how the runoff was dealt with, uh, that sort of thing you want to enter into this notes column. Uh, in order to give it a lot of space, we're going to give that 250 characters, and then just hit OK. Uh, then we'll call this uh, Jericho Settlers Farm uh, Polygons, and hit Save. You can see that got added automatically. Uh, now what we can do is edit this. We're going to basically transcribe these features into this shapefile layer. You do that by right-clicking on that, um, that item in the table of contents, toggle editing, and now we can start drawing features. Uh, under the edit menu, you have your feature add and uh, you know management options here, but what's going to be most useful to us is the Add Feature option. Uh, so you can see I get sort of a target now. What I'm going to do is just trace the outline of the property. And you can see I'm doing a kind of rough cut here, but it's starting to create this semi-transparent polygon as I go. And then when I'm done, I right click and I populate the attribute with a 1. And let's just take a look the same way that we did with the georeference polygon. We'll make this hollow so we can see uh, what's going on underneath. Give that a bright boundary, maybe a little bit thicker so we can see it. 
And there you can see that you now have GIS data uh, of what was originally sketched in the course of your uh, participatory mapping exercise. Now this can uh, sort of take a little while to um, to finish sketching all the features that you uh, that you created in the mapping exercise. But once you're done with that, um, you'll just hit toggle editing again. It'll ask you to save your changes. You definitely want to save them. Uh, and then your GIS data is available for uh, all sorts of cartography, spatial analysis. Uh, if your stakeholder is interested, you should definitely share this information with them because spatial data is a very powerful thing to possess, particularly for an agricultural property. Um, if you uh, have any questions uh, as this goes along, uh, my email address is uh, right here. wboykinm at upm.edu. I'm happy to take any questions you have, and uh, I wish you happy mapping.